We are here. I am back. I am Groot. I am Groot? I am Groot. No, 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 no. Horrible intro. Anyway, MCMA show Malcolm again. Back with you with news. Big news. Big news. Actually, no. You know, you guys know how this works. We got, I got a lot of stuff to talk about. We got Backlash. NXT TakeOver Chicago. And CZW Sacrifice Review. You're getting all three. And also, breaking news about CM Punk. Link to that uh, news about CM Punk is on the script is down in the description box down below. Without further ado, let's get ready to jump into my NXT TakeOver Chicago predictions, my backlash predictions, and my CZW sacrifice review. Got a lot to talk about, so let's get started with the backlash. Backlash predictions. I have a total of eight matches here, and three of them are filler. Quite a filler. We start with the pre show. We got Ty Dillinger versus Hayden English. Ty, D Ty Dillinger. Filler. That is a filler, even though I don't know why. I don't. I've been watching SmackDown for for the last two weeks. I don't I haven't seen both men in SmackDown for a while, so I don't know why this is here on this match. It's just filler. Next, Luke Harper versus Eric Rowan. Did anybody see Eric Rowan's little promo that he did? The little creepy little promo? Him trying on sheet masks on Talking Smack? If you haven't, go watch it. It's on the WWE Network and it's probably on YouTube. So if I were you, I'd go watch it. And with the pick, I'm picking Eric Rowan. Eric Rowan... I don't know. After that little promo, I would love to see Eric Rowan beat Luke Harper. I love both of them. Don't get me wrong, but... This is also kind of a filler match, but this is also trying to do, uh, uh, trying to give, trying to give Luke, not Luke Harper, but Eric Rowan a character. So, Eric Rowan will beat Luke Harper. Now, let's talk about the main card. Now, this is, now, why do I say there's three matches that's a filler? Because here is one that's an absolute filler, and it's a title match. The Usos versus Breezango. I'm going to say this right now. I am not a huge fan of Bring Zongo. I hope the Usos tear their asses apart because I don't like Tyler Breeze. I don't care for Fandango. The gimmick's stupid, but to some fans, they're starting to like Bree Zongo. And the segments that they do, the fashion thing, the Law and Order parody, I'm sorry. I did not chuckle. Not want. I am not a fan, guys. I'm sorry. And not a fan. So they got the cane for that. Not a fan. If you like Breezango, that's that's you. You know, I, I don't like them. I am a huge Uso mark. I love the Usos, but why is this a filler? Not only that the Usos retain, I have a feeling in the Chicago in Chicago, Illinois, we're gonna get three three happy go lucky booty shaking cereal cereal selling ice cream making tromboning mm, mm, mm. yes i believe that the new day will debut at this pay-per-view i know they've been teasing it week after week but seriously come on you have to think about it. I'm sorry. Is Brizango face? And if they are, I don't know how they turn face. It's just, it's heel versus heel as far as I'm concerned. I don't know why. And American Alpha, I don't know why American Alpha didn't win. I'm shocked. The essential, I don't, I don't get it, guys. I don't, I just don't fill her. Like I said, this is a filler match. The Usos will retain and they will probably get beat up by the New Day, which I really hate. For that to happen. I'm not a New Day fan. I'm an Uso American Alpha. And this, uh, and the Ascension and the Colognes. Those are the only four tag teams that I like. Alan Smackdown. I don't care for the New Day. We should know this by now. I don't care about Breezango. And i damn sure. Oh, God. Oh, ugh, I'm sorry. Feather. The Usos will win. 
Now, let's talk about a match that is very easy to predict. Shinsuke Nakamura makes his SmackDown and pay-per-view debut against Dolph Ziggler. Pretty plain and simple, guys. Shinsuke Nakamura is going to win. Do Dolph Ziggler is going to put on a, a, a I think both men are going to put on a really great match. I love Shinsuke Nakamura. I love Dolph Ziggler. Even though I'm kind of shitty with WWE on how they're booking Dolph Ziggler. But I don't like the, the way they have been booking the two gentlemen, per se, to, for, to have this match. But Shinsuke Nakamura will most definitely beat Dolph Ziggler. You never know. It could be match of the night. It's, you, you never know. Next, six women's action. We have... The welcoming committee, led by Natalia, Tamina, and Carmella, with their cheerleader, uh, James Ellsworth, against Naomi, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte. I'm going with, with Becky Lynch, Naomi, and Charlotte. For the last week, couple of weeks on SmackDown, we've been seeing the Welcome Committee getting over on the good guys, so the good guys have to win this match, unless WWE really throws a swerve at us, but you never know, it's WWE, but I still say the face team will win, um, Naomi, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte. Now let's talk about Sami Zayn versus Baron Corbin. This match is similarly kind of a little bit difficult to pick. Baron Corbin, quite frankly, does need some momentum after losing at WrestleMania. That's just my opinion. And plus, he really does need some momentum after losing uh, to Randy Orton on SmackDown. But also, Sami Zayn needs to be boosted back up too. I don't know how to pick this, but you know, I'm going to go with a gut feeling. And I'm going to pick Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn needs to, to win or... Needs to win. I, Sami Zayn just needs to win, guys. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm stuttering so much. I don't know. But Sami Zayn defeats Baron Corbin. Unless Baron Corbin wins. I'll be happy with whatever, whoever wins. Next, we got the United States Championship. We have AJ Styles coming to challenge the champion, the face of America, Kevin Owens. This match, you know what? This match is going to be epic. Now, it could also be a show stealer as well. This could be an epic match. But, I see AJ Styles winning. But, I don't see him walking out with the title. I think Kevin Owens could get disqualified and AJ Styles would win. So, I'm going with AJ Styles via DQ. Next, we're going to the main event. Am I the only one here that wants to see this happen at the main event. Quite honestly, I don't think Randy Orton and Jinder Mahal should be the main event. I believe the United States Championship should be the main event. But WWE likes to do this. I mean, Jinder Mahal, I guess. It's, I guess. But him and the Singh brothers, the Bollywood boys, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not... I really, really don't want to don't see Jinder Mahal beating Randy Orton. I think this should happen. Randy Orton should RKO um, Jinder Mahal, and then out of the blue, we'll get the Singh brothers attacking Randy, but then they, it's three on one, but then Randy Orton RKOs both the Singh brothers, and RKOs one more time Jinder Mahal, and I would love to see... A bit of a punt kick to Jinder Mahal or the or hell or all three of them, quite honestly. But that should end the show. Randy Orton uh, retaining the belt, but also punt kicking either Jinder Mahal or one of the Singh brothers or both the Singh brothers. I don't know. E overall, let's go back to the picks. Ty Dillinger, Eric Rowan. The Usos, Naomi, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte, Shinsuke Nakamura, AJ Styles via DQ, Sami Zayn, and Randy Orton. This is Chicago, Illinois. I don't know. A part of me believed that this pay-per-view wasn't really good, but now that I think about it, it is a decent card. Now, let's talk about NXT TakeOver Chicago. I got a total of five matches for this. 
I could be wrong. So, let's get down with the first match. Roderick Strong versus Eric Young. This rivalry has been going on for quite some time. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I've been picking Sanity lately, and Sanity's been winning. But, you know, I think this match really should have ended between Ty Dillinger and Eric Young. But, Roger Strong, hey, I like Roger Strong, and I love Eric Young. But, you know what? I'm going to pick uh, Eric Young to... I'm picking Eric Young. I think the numbers game... Is going to catch up to Roger Strong. I think Eric Young could win this match. I could be wrong. But I'm sticking with Eric Young to beating Roger Strong. Next, we got the next four matches are all title matches. So let's get down to the WWE United Kingdom Championship. Tyler Bay will defend the belt against Pete Dunne. I would love to see Pete Dunne. Pete Dunne is a, is a bit of a bad is a badass. Just badass. And I would love to see him walk out with the belt. So I'm picking with Pete Dunne. The NXT Women's Championship is in a triple threat match. It was supposed to be a fatal four-way match, but Ember Moon is is hurt with a shoulder injury. We don't know don't know when she'll come back, uh, but get well, Ember Moon, even though I believe you should have walked out with the belt at the last NXT TakeOver show. I'm sorry. I, I'm not really huge with Asuka. And plus, Asuka... Is a heel to me. I she should be heel. I haven't really watched NXT that much lately, and I really sh should start watching it more, keeping up with it more. But uh, Oscar will defend the belt against Ruby Riot and Nikki Cross. I believe that Oscar should retain the belt. I don't see my fellow Indiana, Indy, my fellow Hoosier Ruby Riot walking out of. Chicago, even though she does got some kind of home field advantage. And if you've been born in the South Bend, Gary, Indiana, Chicago area, I think you should already know what I'm talking about. Nikki Cross, I don't see her walking out walking out of it. So Asuka is the best bet. Now, let's talk about the NXT World Championship. That's right, I'm picking the World Championship because I don't believe this match should be the Main event at all for this pay per view. The all, we got Bobby Roode versus Hideo Itami. Hideo Itami is just returning from injury, and I'm I don't I'm sorry guys. I really wish it was Drew McIntyre the one getting the title shot. Nothing against Hideo Itami, but this but the man's injury prone. I'm sorry. I don't really buy him. Don't see him winning the NXT title. I don't see it. So I'm picking Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode will most likely retain the belt against Hideo Tommy. I think I can see a robbery between the two men after this pay-per-view. But I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I don't see Hideo Tommy walking out with the belt, guys. That's just me. I'm sorry. Now to the match that should end the pay-per-view, though. The NXT Tag Team title should be the main event to me. Because not only is it probably going to be the final chapter, we got DIY coming to challenge the Authors of Pain in an NXT in a favorite match of mine, a favorite stipulation of mine, a ladder match. I love ladders. We've known this. I love carnage. I love tables, ladders, and chairs. And I love ladder matches. And this should end the show. But there's been rumors that Johnny Gargano could go heel or Choppa. One of the two are going to go heel. But I don't really want to see that, quite frankly. But if it happens, hey, it happens. But I'm going with, an, with my heart on this. And I believe that DIY will somehow, some way, defeat the Archers of Pain for the NXT Tag Team Champions. I believe... I believe it. I think DIY will finally give the Authors of Pain their first loss. Even though it doesn't have to do with involving pinfall or submission, but I believe this should be DIY's moment. So here we go. Let's rephrase it on the picks. Eric Young defeating Roderick Strong. I got Pete Dunne defeating Ty Tyler Bate. Asuka retaining the belt. Uh, Bobby Roode retaining the NXT title. And I have... 
uh, DIY def um, winning back the NXT Tag Team titles. So basically, I have two titles changing at NXT TakeOver Chicago. And I believe it's going to be a really, really interesting night. By the way, I will be home to watch uh, Backlash, and I won't be home to watch NXT TakeOver. But once I get off work, I will stay up, have an all-nighter, hopefully, and watch uh, NXT TakeOver Chicago and do a review of the, the upcoming Monday of next week after when everything is done or the Sunday when Backlash is over with. Now, let's talk about CZW Sacrifice. We got a lot to talk about. Not too much to talk about, but we just got a lot to talk about, guys. Sorry. Let's talk about the whole pay-per-view show. Overall, I gave it a 7 out of 10. It is a really good show. There are some matches on here that were, were awesome. And then awesome and quite frankly two shocking title uh, changes and also a very weird slash debut of debut and also a very weird and kind of quite frankly confusing ending but, but let's not but let's talk about it now NXT takeover sacrifice I got the pro we had the private party Defeating the Dub Boys in a pretty match. I gave it a one and a half out of out of five. But post match, we see the Dub Boys beat down the private party, turning the Dub Boys heel. And quite frankly, the Dub Boys kind of do need a change in their character after losing the tables, ladders, and chairs, which I haven't seen. By the way, I will watch it. We'll watch the TLC match between the Dub Boys, the Hit Squad, EYFBO, and Charlotte and Graves. I heard that match was really good. Even if I have to buy it, I will watch it. So, let's talk about the CZW Wire title. We had Maxwell Jacob Feinstein. And I, guys, Maxwell Jacob Feinstein. A lot of you guys do not like him. I don't like him either. He's a pretty boy punk, but hey. He took on Yuma for Johnny Yuma for the wire title. Fein, uh, Feinstein, the match was okay. It was a, maybe two, two and three four stars out of five. It, I was kind of shocked to see. But I wasn't really too shocked because... What happened between the bad boy Joey Janela and Johnny Yuma? So I'm not too surprised that uh, Maxwell Jacob Feinstein won the belt. Either way, at the end of the match, um, at the end of the match, Maria uh, Manic comes back and asks for Maxwell Jacob Feinstein to ask him to want her, want him back, even though that. Mm, MJF basically left her to die in the hands of the storm of entrails. Oh my god. Uh, he is a douchebag. Maxwell Jacob Feinstein is a douchebag. And whoever takes that belt away from him, it will be fine with me. Hopefully Shane Strickland. <clears throat> or, I don't know. Could be anybody. But anyway, Maria Manna basically slaps the shit out of him and walks off. Okay, Mar Maria Manic just comes out, slaps the shit out of Max. Well, Jacob Feinstein just walks off. Then we had a really good match. I say three and a half, no, three and three fourths out of five. Jack Sabres Jr. versus David Starr. Very great competitive match. Go watch it. You'll love it. And also, a match that really, really. Kind of shocked me. It was really hard hitting too. And I also gave this three and three, four stars out of five. Shane Strickland versus Sammy Callahan. Shane Strickland defeats Sammy Callahan with the swerve stomp. Beautiful move. And post-match, a promo of a new star in the combat zone 
named Ace Austin Shakespeare who comes into the ring only to get beat down, super kicked, and kicked to the face by both Sammy Callahan and Shane Strickland. And also, they start dancing. Bust a move. I ain't no Sammy Callahan can dance. But with that comedy over, it gets... The comedy stops. Here come the storms and entrails. Dan O'Hara and... I'm going to butcher this name. Shellac made their way to the ring and almost put the beat down on Ace Austin Shakespeare before... Before he is saved by the Awakening, Stockade, and G. Raver. They hit down to the ring and made the save, but only to get their asses kicked by um, by the Storm of Entrails, even though there was no match, even though there should have been a match. It was pretty hard hitting, too. Only to see uh, the return of the, the ultra-violent beast, Masada, returns... And said he's back full time and he can't wait to face, I believe it's, I believe it's, it's Shellac versus uh, Masada in the first round of Tournament of Death. Can't wait to see it. Now we get to, uh, quite frankly, the match of the night to me. The CZW rules just... An ultra-violent CCW match between Joe Gacy defending the belt against Blackheart Leo Rush. That match was simply freaking amazing. Four and a half stars out of five. Match of the night. Pretty badass. And we got a new CCW world champion. The king is dead. Long live the new king, the Blackheart Leo Rush. Congratulations, Leo Rush. You deserved it. Oh, my God. That match is just so freaking hard-hitting. Watch it. Watch that match. Watch it. Look it up on Daily Motion. Look up wherever you can on your search bar. Even if you have to go to a Russian website to watch it, I am begging you, go and find that match I promise you, you will love every bit of it. Trust me. And Joe Gacy, I, I don't know. Uh, you guys let me know in the comment section below. Uh, I don't think his title reign was that really good. Like every fan in the Combat Zone rest, Wrestling Universe thought it was going to be. But for Leo Rush, I think he'll make one hell of a CZW World Heavyweight Champion. And whoever takes that belt away from him, good freaking luck. That is the new king. I love Leo Rush. My God, that, that match was so awesome. Now we get to the main event. A steel cage match. Father Matt Tr Matthew Tremont defeating Joey Janela. This match was okay. It was okay. It was really good. Gave it a 4 out of 5. But at the end, Matt Tremont wins the I believe it was a power bomb on the thump on thumbtacks that was enough to put Joey Janela away. But at the end of the match, Joey Janela announced that he was quitting CZW and basically tells that he is done with David John Marklin, a, a reference to CZW's DJ Hyde. And also his girlfriend comes down to the ring. I believe it's his girlfriend. Penelope, I can't think of her last name, and basically kicks her to the curb and says he's done with her. Here's where confusion hits me, guys. Not only Joey Janela quits, but there's also been a rumor that he's going to NXT. I don't know if that's true or not. You guys let me know in the comment section below if he's going to join um, NXT. I wouldn't mind seeing Joey Janela, but I didn't... I liked the match between the Steel Cage match, but I didn't really want it, Matt Tremont to win this match. After all the hell he has put Joey Janela through, I really wanted Joey Janela to win this match. But it was just weird how the way they ended it, and it was just weird just having Matt Tremont win. It's just just weird, guys. It was just weird. But either way, it doesn't it? But either way, Joey Janela just quits, breaks up with Penelope, and then just basically panders to the crowd saying, fuck the crowd, fuck everybody else, fuck DJ Hyde. And out of the blue, he said, yeah, dude, I'm single in real life. 
So Penelope, all confused, all distraught, starts to break down. But out of the blue, here come Maxwell Jacob Feinstein kissing Penelope on the lips. And I guess Penelope is now a, a heel and going to join Maxwell Jacob Feinstein? Your guess is as good as mine. It was just a weird ending. But overall, CZW Sacrifice, like I said, it was a pretty great show. 7 out of 10. I would go watch this pay-per-view. The only match I would, would probably let you guys skip is the Dub Boys versus the... The Dub Boys versus the Private Party. That match was not really that good. Everything else was was pretty good. It was really great. Watch it. Watch it on TCW.com. Uh, $9.99 a month, just like the WWE Network. Or just watch it on Daily Motion. If you don't have it, just watch, find the show, and watch it. Just watch it. Now let's talk about another move. Another news in WWE, CM Punk, a UK promoter, I don't know his name, I just heard that a UK promoter is offering a million dollars for CM Punk to return into a wrestling ring. I don't know if CM Punk, it's been talked about all through this morning on Facebook or all through the afternoon or whatever you get the uh, headline, but I have the, I have the article on the in the description down below. I don't know. Should CM, would CM Punk take the million? I don't know. I don't think he will. But if he does, that will be freaking epic. And it will be worldwide if it if it is. I If CM Punk does come back to, to the wrestling ring, that will be amazing. But will he return to WWE? That ship, we don't know. But until then, at that time, if CM Punk does return, great. If he doesn't, hey. But I don't know. You guys let me know in the comment section below on what you think about it. So, with that being said, I will be back here for the, the NXT TakeOver. Um, for the NXT TakeOver and Backlash per review. Until that time, uh, you guys let me know on what you thought about. Let me know on your picks on NXT TakeOver Chicago. And your Backlash uh predictions and also let me know what you thought about CZW's uh sacrifice and also what you think about the CM Punk situation of the million dollars being offered to him to come back to the ring. I am Malcolm from the MCMA show. I will see you catch you guys for the reaction of NXT Takeover Chicago and WWE SmackDown presents Backlash. Until then I'm Malcolm from the MCMA show. Remember to please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're new to this channel. Subscribe to this channel. I talk about wrestling. I talk about everything on this channel. I do it for you, my lovely uh, subscriber, subscriber and fans that love to listen to me talk. So, with that being said, I'm out from MC. Make sure you guys have a wonderful day. God bless you all, and we'll see you on Sunday. Enjoy Backlash. Enjoy uh, NSC TakeOver, and also enjoy the new UK special, and I will probably do a review on that too. Enjoy the wrestling weekend. Until that time, God bless you all, and I'm out!